everyone. Thanks for having me this afternoon. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Ming Tian, a lecturer in low carbon engineering at the University of uh, Exeter. Uh, just for some context, I completed like, my PhD on hydrogen storage and carbon capture at the University of East Anglia in the UK, and then worked on pulse composite for onboard hydrogen system at the University of Bath before taking my current position. And today I'm going to talk about how we use Neutron to support my research in the field of hydrogen storage materials. Uh, I'm going to start out giving a brief introduction on material-based solution for hydrogen storage and then focusing on uh, two neutron techniques, inelastic neutron scattering INS, and uh, quasi-elastic neutron scattering quens. So uh, if you look uh, uh, around us, almost all the major changes in our society, the dramatic revolutions in uh, transport and the manufacturing, the growth of computing and internet, etc., have their origin in understand the physics and the chemistry of materials. So the goal of modern material, material science is to understand the properties of material on the molecular or even atomic level. Um, and to use this knowledge to optimize the properties and to develop new materials. Uh, in neutron scattering, material are exposed to intense beams of in, uh, neutron inside specialized instrument. The information from neutron reveals the molecular structure inside of the material, uh, which can be directly linked to physical and chemical proper properties uh, we experience in the everyday world. Um, today, I'm hoping to give an overview on how we use neutron scattering to boost our research in developing materials for hydrogen storage. And so first, why hydrogen? Why it is important? Uh, as mentioned, I'm working in hydrogen energy because my view is that hydrogen is going to play a critical role in the energy system. Particularly, uh, many countries now have committed to uh, a net zero emission by 2050 in order to tackle the global warming and the climate change. Um, so this uh, f uh, figure shows us how hydrogen uh, works. So hydrogen can be produced from water uh, using uh, intermittent renewable energy resources, uh, for example, solar energy or wind power. And uh, the idea is that uh, um, you can uh, take your water and then uh, split your water into hydrogen and oxygen, and then you can use hydrogen to power your car, your house, whatever need energy to drive. And then hydrogen will be converted into water again. So you can uh, see this is almost a, a green cycle. Uh, water comes in and out. So hydrogen has a great potential um, to be amazing, but uh, uh, to make hydrogen smoothly transfer in this circle, uh, there's uh, many uh, challenges. One of the biggest challenges is hydrogen storage and transport. So as you can um, imagine, hydrogen is lightweight uh, gas and flammable. So how to store it and deliver it uh, remain as a technical barrier. So if you look at this uh, energy density table, hydrogen is uh, located in the bottom right so if you look at the gravimetric density, uh, energy per uh, weight, uh, hydrogen is uh, twice or three times higher than diesel or petrol. If you look at the volume uh, density, uh, energy per volume, uh, so hydrogen is uh, very low, nearly zero. So which means it requires massive volume of hydrogen to provide enough energy for a car to travel reasonable distance, for example. Uh, conventionally, hydrogen is stored either uh, in high-pressure hydrogen storage tank at uh, 700 times atmospheric pressure or liquid hydrogen at cryogenic temperature. Um, so you can, uh, the middle photo shows us hydrogen car, a uh, hydrogen bus running in London. Uh, you can see there are four hydrogen tanks, huge hydrogen tanks sitting on top of a bus. Uh, if you uh, compare the size of the tank with the uh, pri with a private car. You can see directly by, uh, where the problem is. And the both methods are energy intensive and pose risk uh, high risk issues. So we want to solidify hydrogen or store hydrogen in solid phase. And solid hydrogen uh, not only solve the storage problem but also has been uh, predicted to be a near room temperature superconductor. 
Um, hydrogen phase can be changed by changing temperature or pressure. If you think about water, that's an easy example. Uh, you, if we heat water up to uh, 100 Celsius in air, it turns to steam. And we cool down water at zero uh, degree C, and we will get the solid water ice, uh, similar to this. But hydrogen's boiling points and the freezing points are much lower. For example, uh, to, to achieve solid hydrogen, uh, we need to cool down to 14 Kelvin uh, or 400 gigapascal. And these extreme conditions are very difficult and expensive to achieve and maintain. And we found nanoparticle materials has shown the ability to stabilize freeze uh, molecules at a, a relatively milder condition. So the uh, parts of materials I have been uh, working with has a very sp special feature, uh, that large surface area and the tiny small pores. So the pore size is in nano range, uh, uh, meaning time is smaller than human's hair. So as soon as we expose the clean porous surface to gas, it will absorb, uh, compress, and store gas molecules in its tiny spaces and uh, we call porous material as molecular sponge. So uh, my job is to gain better understanding on how uh, gas molecules interact with the surface, therefore lead to a better design. And one of the challenges here is um, obvious, how to characterize hydrogen, how to characterize the interaction. Uh, so hydrogen uh, is lightweighted, it's invisible gas, and it's insensitive to uh, lab-based techniques, for example, um, X-ray diffraction. So uh, if you see the, this figure, hydrogen had the smallest uh, X-ray cross-section, and but, uh, on the other hand, the neutron cross-section of hydrogen is the largest among all the elements. So, uh, and the neutron, the deep penetration uh, of neutron can uh, rather, uh, the neutron can deeply penetrate everything, uh, the cross dot, sample cell, sample itself, and directly probe uh, hydrogen inside the pores. Uh, so making the uh, neutron ideal tool for studying hydrogen storage materials. Um, so the inelastic neutron uh, scattering covers a vast range of lengths uh, and the time scales. And for my study, the most relevant uh, quasi-elastic neutron scattering uh, the, around the very narrow area around the zero energy transfer, uh, which probes the whole body motions, uh, such as diffusion, on and with in materials and uh, in elastic neutron scattering, uh, which probes the motion of atoms and molecules within a material. Uh, so first I'm going to uh, talk about the in elastic neutron scattering. So this is our, our uh, uh, typical uh, INS pattern for uh, solid hydrogen in bulk collected on uh, Tosca equipment uh, in a raw lab in the UK. So this is the sample cell we have been working with. So the uh, experimental procedure is we uh, seal the cell, uh, touch the cell to the central stick, and uh, um, insert the central stick into the uh, cross dot. And then we pressurize the system with uh, hydrogen, and then cool down the whole system to 12 Kelvin. And so then we know this is um, a solid hydrogen inside. So we, we shine the beam through and collected the data. And then we found uh, the, this sharp significant peak at 14.7 MeV. That is char characteristic peak for solid hydrogen uh, collected at 12 Kelvin. And if we heated the system up to 17 Kelvin, um, and uh, the solid hydrogen melted to liquid phase. And we collected the data, we can see this uh, characteristic peak uh, broadened and flattened. So it's become, became a, a big, big pump. And if we uh, continue to uh, increase the pressure, uh, temperature to gaseous hydrogen temperature, and uh, uh, it becomes complete, the curve becomes completely flat. Um, so, and then we, um, following the similar procedure, we uh, load our sample, the activity carbon, uh, that is pure carbon, uh, there is no functional groups, 
uh, no metal and no catalyst inside, just 100% pure carbon. And we loaded the sample uh, in the sample cell, and uh, we uh, cooled down the whole system to 77 Kelvin this time, and then po uh, pressurized the uh, system with uh, hydrogen at different uh, pressure. And then we uh, collected the data, and we found a, a solid like hydrogen peak at uh, 77 Kelvin, uh, at, uh, at the pressure as low as 0 0.16 bar. And remember, to achieve solid hydrogen in bulk, we need to cool down the whole system to 12 Kelvin. That is uh, using, uh, for example, liquid helium. And But in this case, by applying our material, we can achieve solid like hydrogen at 77 Kelvin liquid nitrogen temperature. And that is much cheaper and easier condition uh, for practical. Um, and uh, so the right two figures are uh, integrated intensity of elastic line and the roto line uh, indicating the accumulation of the solid like hydrogen uh, with gas pressure increases. And the previously, uh, uh, we have a uh, team's group have reported the NS investigation on hydrogen confined in uh, porous carbons with different pore size. And uh, we can see this onion like carbon with a pore size larger than one, one nanometer. It, it doesn't have the ability to solidify or densify hydrogen at this condition. But for other uh, carbon materials with a much uh, uh, relatively smaller uh, pole size, and they all show the solid uh, hydrogen peak uh, at 77 Kelvin. Um, so we know uh, pole size plays a key role uh, in hydrogen densification process. So we're wondering, does pole shape also matters? So to answer this question, we selected uh, three uh, carbon uh, structure, uh, different carbon shape, uh, pores shapes. Uh, they are, these are graphic, uh, graphitic uh, layers we can see from TM images uh, representing uh, slit pores and uh, the single wall carbon nanotubes representing cylindrical pores and uh, this is a TE7 carbon, this is a kind of benchmark for our study as a reference control material uh, that is a completely disordered structure. And we uh, carried out this uh, IS experiment on hydrogen confined in three pore shapes uh, on, uh, uh, at a different instrument uh, at ILL. And we all see uh, this uh, solid like hydrogen peak uh, at 77 Kelvin and uh, one bar for three different shapes, so which tells us um, the uh, Pole size is a, a critical a key factor in this pole size. So, which actually is good for uh, material engineering, which improves the uh, material engineering efficiency and reduce the cost on controlling uh, or purifying pole shapes. Yeah, you know, we just need to focus on controlling and narrow down the pole size. And then Another uh, important information uh, we really care about is how much hydrogen the material can store in total. So we carried out this high pressure gas absorption uh, on this equipment in the lab. So the maximum hydrogen uptake is about 2.5%. And the single wall common tubes has a, a slightly lower hydrogen uptake due to its uh, relatively small uh, surface area and low uh, pore volume. And I used the mathematical modeling to fit the experimental uh, data, and then we can calculate the hydrogen density uh, from it. And we can see that all three, for all three uh, shapes, hydrogen can be densified to a very high density in um, densified uh, uh, hydrogen density range. And the T7, the disordered pulse, shows the maximum. Uh, the highest hydrogen density, even higher than solid hydrogen density. Um, the molecular simulation visualize um, the uh, hydrogen behaviors, uh, hydrogen, uh, how hydrogen parking inside the pores. So this uh, um, 
golden sphericals are hydrogen uh, items. Uh, the uh, gray sticks uh, represents the uh, carbon items. So we can see hydrogen uh, molecules form the highly does uh, order the two uh, layer structure within this uh, slit pole shapes, uh, and the the pole uh, the, the space is too limit. So hydrogen is fixed in three dimension, cannot move. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we can, uh, if we look at the uh, cylindrical pores, uh, hydrogen forms a one-layer structure and a, a, a spherical uh, one layer and a spherical structure. And this um, with a certain amount of mobility. I think this um, from this NS study, there are two. Um, conclusions or highlights in this study. First is uh, NS provides the evidence that immobile or solid like hydrogen can be formed at a much milder condition. And secondly, the pole size is the key in hydrogen storage. Although pole shape influences the packing of hydrogen, but especially at engineering level, control, uh, controlling pole size is more critical. Uh, and uh, um, so based on this conclusion, uh, we developed a uh, uh, power's composite as a liner in order to line up the uh, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen storage tank in, uh, in order to uh, increase its capacity, reduce uh, the pressure so that we can use more standard material and the regulator uh, reduce the tank's cost. Uh, we selected the polymer of intrinsic uh, uh, microporosity, PIM1, and that is a uh, polymer, a very interesting polymer. It can be proceeded into a uh, membrane. So you can see this um, yellow transparent membrane is PIM1 membrane. And it has a microporosity with a most pores less than one nanometer. And this ticks our uh, optimal pore size uh, box. And, uh, but the hydrogen storage capacity is, is relatively low. So for, for our application, this is a good starting point, but the hydrogen capacity uh, needs to be improved. So to improve uh, the uh, ca uh, capacity, we uh, introduced the porous fillers in its uh, membrane system. So these are three porous fillers, and uh, they have the uh, extra high surface area, a macro porosity, uh, uh, less than one nanometer, and they are highly stable. They are perfect. Only problem for them is they are uh, in powder form. So powder is very difficult to manage in industry. Um, so this is useless. Um, so we, we try to com we combine the good processability uh, from membrane uh, with the uh, porous fillers, uh, the, the high surface uh, high storage capacity from the porous fillers to form uh, the composite membrane. So those three are composite membrane we uh, synthesized successfully. And then um, the key information here is uh, how much hydrogen it can store, how, how much hydrogen uh, the, the membrane can store. So the maximum hydrogen capacity is about, is here, is about 68%. Uh, uh, no, sorry, six weight percent uh, at 120 bar. So you can see the trend. If we continue, uh, increase the pressure on the uptake will continually uh, increased, uh, but six weight percent already uh, beyond the uh, DOE target, the target uh, set by Department of en Energy. Um, so this is a practical application developed based on the theoretical study by Neutron. Another uh, interesting, um, surprising phenomenon uh, in the INS experiment is uh, we found the hydrogen confinement is uh, temperature dependent. Uh, it's, it's not a surprise to find that, but what surprised us is if we see left figure, the immobile or solid hydrogen maintain at a temperature as high as 50 Kelvin, and it disappears at 120 Kelvin. A single carbon nanotube shows the ability of immobile immobilizing hydrogen at a temperature up to uh, 130 Kelvin, if you see this um, uh, orange diamond. and at uh, uh, and uh, uh, and this this disappears at 150 Kelvin. 
So which means all the solid like hydrogen are mobile at 150. So this high temperature is pretty high for, for hydrogen molecules. Um, so uh, so we want we want to understanding the diffusion, the understanding diffusion behavior of hydrogen molecules uh, in porous materials is, is very important for the design of membranes for gas storage, separations, and the catalyst. Um, and so we uh, acquaint the quasi-elastic neutron category offers uh, the opportunity look into hydrogen diffusion and the dynamics inside the pores. So what does uh, qu uh, quasi mean? Quasi means uh, apparently, but not really. So quasi-elastic is the uh, neutron scattering near zero energy transfer, uh, very close to elastic peak, but but look at uh, the broadening. So the broadening of elastic peak uh, gives the information about dynamical hydrogen molecules. Uh, the wider the elastic peak is, uh, the, the more mobile hydrogen molecules are. And uh, uh, compared to INS, uh, Queens uh, offers much higher resolution, which gives the opportunity to quantify uh, the hydrogen dynamics, to quantify the mobile and the immobile phases of confined hydrogen. Uh, so uh, we carried out the sequence uh, on hydrogen confined in T7 carbon at one bar, uh, across the different temperature, and the black peak is the uh, uh, instrument resolution. So if, if, if all hydrogen completely are uh, immobilized, there would not be any broadening. Uh, so we see only see the uh, increase on intensity. But at, some, uh, at 35 Kelvin, so the red uh, curves, uh, red circles, we see, we see the hydrogen molecules are moving in a confined geometry. Reflecting on this is a broadening of the, uh, of the peak. Um, and uh, the, so with the temperature increase, the quench signals continue to broaden and flatten with the increase of temperature until the 130 Kelvin, we see it's uh, nearly flat, but not really. So there's still a very small amount of more, uh, immobilized hydrogen uh, at 130 K. Mm, so the quince, this uh, quince signal composes of solid-like hydrogen, elast uh, elastic peak, and the liquid-like hydrogen, this quasi-elastic. Uh, so we can quantify these two components actually through the uh, peak feeding of data uh, uh, deconvolution. So the uh, data reduction was performed using um, standard methods. So we use, and then we use the uh, mathematical models to fit the solid-like hydrogen peak and the liquid-like hydrogen peak, uh, so that we know the relative uh, quantities of the two hydrogen phases. Uh, and also the um, full weights at half maximum of Lorentzian peak also can be extracted from the um, data reduction from the uh, fitting, uh, which suggests the broadening of the peaks. Um, and we can use the uh, elastic incoherent structure factor ESF uh, to calculate the ratio of solid-like to uh, total confined hydrogen. So this is the quasi-elastic signal. And this shows us the area of the solid hydrogen. This area of solid hydrogen indicates the uh, amount of solid hydrogen and also uh, over the solid plus the liquid. So if it's, again, uh, immobilized the system, so the liquid phase will be zero. So uh, EISF will remain at one. Uh, where there is a motion, and the hydrogen move around in a confined volume, uh, the EISF will initially decrease uh, with increasing uh, of Q momentum transfer. Um, so then, then we can calculate the, uh, the population. We see the population of solid-like to liquid-like is temperature dependent. So at 35 Kelvin, uh, there, are, uh, there is about 80% solid phase, solid-like phase. 
And the shape of EISF also can be modeled by different, uh, can be explained uh, by models. And I tried different models and find the best fit is model from the confined uh, uh, rotation model with a diffusion radium of 0 0.7 uh, nanometer at all temperature. And that is in good agreement with our previous study. So hydrogen confined, uh, uh, solidified inside the pulse with a pulse size at 0 0.7 nanometer. It has all uh, linked con consistent. And uh, then uh, the immobile fraction is 80% uh, at 35 Kelvin and reduced to 40%, 77K, and continue reduced with uh, temperature increases. Uh, and the broadening, the uh, FWHM, tells how wide the peaks is. The bigger uh, the volume, volume is, the wider Quan's peak, and the quicker the hydrogen moves. So we can uh, use jump, mo uh, jump diffusion model to fit the full width at half maximum as a function of Q squared. And I found the HR uh, model fits the curve the best. Again, confirm the hydrogen molecule can, uh, diffuse in a confined uh, volume. And from the jump diffusion uh, model, we can calculate the diffusion coefficient uh, listed in, in the table. So from the Quenz study, uh, uh, it's a quantitatively illustrated the solid-like and liquid-like hydrogen confined in, in pulse at a, a wide temperature up to 130K. Um, and uh, the population is uh, of solid to liquid is uh, temperature dependent. Um, and uh, we can see the confinement, the nano confinement really improved the thermal stability of hydrogen. And this actually can be applied uh, for some other applications. For example, we are working on um, uh, uh, find a new route to convert hydrogen uh, crystals crystals to different phases, for example, even towards metallic hydrogen. Uh, maybe this nano confinement can help us to find a different direction uh, to there. So I'm just to quickly sum up. Neutron scattering is, a, a, I, I hope I have demonstrated that neutron is a powerful tool for studying the uh, interaction between hydrogen and the materials and uh, uh, provide the fundamental support for the material development. Uh, and the neutron um, has great potentials for wider applications. And learning neutron techniques, working with a scientist in this uh, field around the world is a fantastic uh, experience. And finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all my colleagues and the friends who uh, contributed and lead the project and to support my career development. And thanks for the finance uh, support, especially the beam time granted by STFC, ILL, and HZB, which definitely are uh, critical for my career development. And thank you all for your attention. Uh, I think I'm, I stop here and uh, I'm happy to take your questions. Mm -hmm.